look at the Mood Mark II by Chase Bliss. As you can tell by the runtime on this video, uh, it's going to be difficult to know how to talk about the Mood in a concise way. This is my Mark I original OG Chase Bliss Audio Mood, and this is a pedal that has probably gotten more use on this channel than nearly anything else, even if you haven't noticed. What you're hearing right now, this kind of like moving ambient wash underneath my talking, is so frequently across all these videos on my channel, mostly generated with the Chase Bliss mood. Uh, I have found that this is kind of a immediately useful kind of droning background ambient marvel. The kind of self-contained looping and wet effect routing, the types of engines in this thing have always lended themselves to these kind of formless happy accident looping kind of drone machine sounds. But it has its limitations. The record time at maximum on the micro looper is not very long and in order to get anything remotely kind of robust out of that introduces an amount of clock noise that can be somewhat prohibitive if you're not looking for clock noise and additionally knowing how your loop is going to land as you play into it uh, is intentionally fraught it's obtuse and it's meant to be that way uh, which can create like we've talked about for happy accidents but it also lacks reliability consistency uh, and for somebody like me who works in a DAW almost all the time, that can have some unfortunate drawbacks. Also, it's in mono. Mood Mark II is maybe the most ambitious and technically impressive thing Chase Bliss has released so far, in my opinion. The Mood Mark II takes everything, almost everything, we'll get into that, beloved about the Mark I uh, Chase Bliss mood and builds upon it, expands on it, and also preserves it. There is a classic mode in this that will give you all of the original sounds if you want them, and also you can use them in stereo. So you can take the classic sounds, but expand them out, or move on to entirely new, refined, and improved upon, in my opinion, versions of all of those engines that you loved from the original mood. We're not getting into all the changes in this portion of the video because we're going to cover so much over the course of our sound samples, but just to highlight a couple of what I think to be key improvements, things to really look out for in the new Chase Bliss Mood Mark II. Number one is they have doubled the record time on the looper. Number two is they have massively reduced the clock noise on that center control, which means you can now get the kind of grit and lo-fi quality of low clock sound without added white noise. Three, and this is probably the kind of biggest one, is you have stereo ins and outs now. You can run TRS stereo in, TRS stereo out, and what's really noteworthy is you can run it true stereo. The left channel will process independently of the right channel. Uh, delayed taps going into the front of mood that ping on the left side all the way will generate reverb in mood only on the left channel. Or you can activate the spread dip switch up top, which will allow you to uh, create a more traditional stereo effect, basically. Within the wet channel of this thing, it sums your signal to mono and generates a stereo image from it which is how almost every delay and reverb you own already does things. Speaking of those dip switches, uh, this is where this thing really gets exciting. All of your dip switches up top are MIDI controllable now. There are CC values assigned to all of them, allowing you to do things like move between classic mode and the Mark II engines, the ability to activate and deactivate ramping, the ability to move between classic and modern modes, the ability to uh, introduce or remove that spread control all from your MIDI controller. No little tiny screwdriver necessary to activate those dip switches. The new Mood Mark II listens to MIDI clock, which is a massive improvement over the first one. And you can actually set separate subdivisions for your wet channel and for your looper. You can also have your looper follow anything from clock to MIDI clock to the time on the wet channel. There's so much customization under the hood of the new mood. There's also now a wealth of hidden menu controls on the new mood. You can think of them as kind of like submenu parameters, hold down both switches and use the knobs and switches to further customize your wet effects to exactly what you want. The ability to adjust the stereo spread on the wet effects, the ability to apply a low pass filter to the wet channel, um, the ability to put stereo widening on just the loop or the wet effects or vice versa. You can now finally also independently adjust the volumes for the loop and the wet effect 
uh, independently of one another. So you can have your loop sitting below the white effects or have your delays kind of subtly sitting below the looper itself. And if you remember from the first version of the mood, um, anytime you ran that micro looper into the wet effect, it ran full wet. You can now send that looper dry at unity volume with the wet effect, giving you added clarity and structure within this pedal. Like I said, there is arguably too much to touch on here, and we're not even really going to be able to get into the MIDI side of this pedal super deeply in this video. Uh, this video is already way too long, and it's just going to be talking about the main controls, the stereo implementation, and some of those kind of sub-menu controls. There's so much at play here. Uh, the amount of stuff you can do with just this one pedal is mind-boggling. This is the most robust ambient machine I've ever used. I do, however, think that the MIDI side of things, as well as stuff like the synth mode, deserves to be touched on in this, so uh, we will probably circle back in the near future and do a mood MIDI deep dive, but for now, we're going to take a look at mood, how it's changed, how it stayed the same, and how this new version can do almost anything you ever wanted your original mood to be able to do. Let's get into our sound samples. As always, before we get into our sound samples, let's go ahead and talk through our signal chain and the context we are working in. I am playing my Jennings Navigator into the Bondi FX Squish Ass Compressor, the JFET uh, Boost by 29 Pedals, the DCX Boost by Origin FX. From there we go to the Chase Bliss Mood Mark II, Mono In Stereo Out, to the Hologram Microcosm, the Strymon L Cap, the Strymon Big Sky, and our Amp Rig, which is going to be the Universal Audio Dream and Ruby in a stereo pair with a GFI duophony. We're going to be keeping our Big Sky, our L Cap, and our Microcosm off for pretty much the entire run of this. Uh, we're going to be using the Mood for almost everything, as we largely did on that intro track. Uh, but we do have both boosts and our compressor on. This is what our dry tone sounds like. <laughs> Before we get into all the sound samples and all the craziness that this pedal can do, I thought it might be smart to kind of take a high level, very broad look at what mood is, what the two channels are, and how the routing between them kind of determines the way you use the pedal. So mood in its broadest sense is a wet effect on the left, a looper on the right, a shared set of controls in the middle that determine how it sounds, how it functions, and how those two channels interact with one another. On your left side, you have three effects and two parameters to control it. On the right side, you have a looper, three different looper types, two parameters to control it, a shared mix knob, a shared clock, which is effectively the buffer size, length, and quality of audio that is shared between both sides, and a routing control at the bottom, which basically tells Mood whether to process your dry guitar through the wet channel, the looper through the wet channel, or both. In its bypass state, uh, wet effect runs into looper, but once you activate that always listening looper, it feeds back into the wet channel, basically allowing you to pass audio back and forth between the two. So a quick practical demonstration of the signal flow in mood. Here's our dry tone. Here is the wet channel engaged. Here is the dry channel. And here's the always listening looper. And now you can feed that into that delay or the reverb. Or conversely, you can turn that delay on because the looper is in its listening state right now. The wet effect is before the looper in the signal flow. So we've got and so you can hear that the, the delay has been saved into the looper as well. Now, if we turn this over to reverb and turn it back on, 
the saved loop with that delay will now feed into the wet channel because the looper printed that delay pattern onto it and now we can hand it back. And you can theoretically pass those back and forth for forever. What you could do is go to a longer delay line turn up that that modify make some weird choices and send that back over Whenever that looper is not active, it's listening for anything wet channel or dry channel, depending on how your, how your routing is configured. And then beyond that, you use the center toggle to determine whether your dry signal or your saved loop gets processed through that wet channel. So say you're doing that pass back and forth, but you don't want to, again, uh, smear out your, your micro looper. What you can do is create that delay pattern. that loop is saved in the wet channel but you'll notice it's in the looper but now it's not processing back through the wet and that's because we have that toggle set over here so my guitar will still have that delay uh, or similarly could drop that over to a reverb and have only the loop process through it and my dry guitar goes through unaffected Or both. One of the hyper versatile and fascinating things about the new Mood Mark II is the implementation of stereo. You basically have your uh, mono in stereo out configuration, which we're going to be using for the bulk of this video, uh, as well as a proper stereo in stereo out. And what's interesting there is within that context, you can turn on spread or turn it back off again. Uh, spread basically sums your input signal to mono in the wet loop and uh, generates a stereo image based on that. Uh, whereas the kind of standard functionality of the pedal uh, processes your left and right channels completely independently of one another. So that's actually really fascinating because it means that when you're playing a mono sounding guitar line through that stereo input, it's still going to sound mono because all it's hearing is center channel audio. And so it's processing everything in parallel or the same way on left and right. So this is what the reverb sounds like by itself. despite the fact that we are in stereo. Now, if you're processing audio in mono like that, you can turn on spread, which we will do via a dip switch up top being controlled by my MIDI controller. So you can hear that that's now being uh, kind of made stereo using some kind of like internal crossovers and, and stereo processing trickery. But if we jump back to that mono signal, again, the truth of the matter is we're not in mono. So let's let's take that out and let's bring in dig, but in a very interesting non-traditional way. I have this set up so that only the right delay is playing right now. Now, if I turn on that reverb again, you can hear that the reverb is only processing on that right side, and that's because the left and right channels process completely independently of one another, which is a more accurate version of stereo that you can use or not use in this pedal. So you can hear that's just the one channel. And what's great about that is it means that if you turn on kind of your left and right delay channels 
on something like the dig. So now we have hard pan delay coming in from both the hard left and right channels and no dry in the center. You get your, you get your reverb uh, properly represented as those kind of like far left and rights. If you bring those back down, you've got your center channel again. The reverb will sit exactly where your incoming signal sits as well. Of course, you can turn spread on. And it's important to note that when you have spread on, you still get your stereo image from before the pedal. but you are getting a artificially widened version of the reverb from inside that is taking that input signal and creating a mono to stereo sound inside of it. And then if we turn that back off, we go back to our true stereo. So for the bulk of these sound samples, we are going to be using the mood as mono in, stereo out. Uh, and the reason for that is because the stereo implementation on the mood is uh, true stereo, meaning whatever happens on the left channel is affected on the left channel and whatever happens on the right channel is affected on the right channel. Uh, you would have to be running some sort of stereo image uh, instrument or effect ahead of mode, and we're trying to kind of keep things as dry and as clean as possible as we explore the different engines in the pedal. So mono in, stereo out for the purposes of this section of the video. Uh, we will basically be switching between modern and classic and then applying the spread control after that to kind of dig into each of the three wet effects and each of the three looping configurations. Uh, a second thing to note as we move through this portion of the video is going to be that I am not actually messing with the dip switches along the top. I have a MIDI controller off to the left that I'm using to turn on and off classic mode and spread uh, without having to kind of like fiddle with the top of the pedal. So let's get into the wet channel on the Mood Mark II. We're gonna start things off with the reverb and then work our way across reverb, delay, and slip. Um, we will start pretty much every single one of them with mix at noon, clock at that kind of noon point as well, and then we'll kind of mess with all four of those controls as we walk through each of the different engines. <laughs> The way that Mood's reverb works is you basically have a multi-tap delay that gets smeared out into a reverb. So if you take that modify all the way down, you hear all the individual delay taps. You can get somewhat reverberant stuff by just like letting your chord ring out. But when you play kind of percussive palm muted stuff, you get a lot of very delay heavy uh, interpretations of reverb. versus but as you bring that up Your time control is going to be uh, the space between those taps, uh, which also means longer and shorter decay times.
It's worth knowing uh, this new version of it is smoother, less resonant, and a little bit more kind of like even sounding than the classic mode. So here's our current mode. Versus classic. Which I feel like has a little bit more like resonant buildup. And of course gets a lot more clock noise as you go down. Versus And of course, in new mood, you have spread. And let's take that modified down so you can hear how spread's being uh, implemented in this context. Uh, each of the different wet effects implements stereo widening in different ways for the reverb. The, uh, the stereo widening is applied by basically panning all those individual delay taps all around your stereo field, so. So with higher clock settings and shorter times and a lot of Modify, you can actually get like a really cool smooth. Something a little bit resonant, but not too aggressive. And with a high clock, you can get. It's punchy, it's, uh, it's, it's still very kind of like washy and cool, but like, but it's a little bit more like constrained. But as you dial back, and you start to notice you also get some degradation in that clock, way less noise than classic. But a little bit more low fineness, which is great. It's a little crispier.
Resetting to all knobs at noon, let's take a look at the delay. We've got spread off, we've got classic off. Uh, this is what the new delay sounds like. This one's gonna be very straightforward. Modify is your repeats. At maximum, it functions as a sound down sound looper, like a tape machine, and it'll just hold. And time is not like a pitch time kind of thing, it just kind of like mangles the time on your repeats. And you can use that to almost kind of like add a, a, like a second set of looping alongside your other side because you can do these kind of... By stretching and contracting that delay buffer, uh, you can kind of create new rhythmic patterns inside your delay. And then if you want that pitch shifting, And of course, if you find a spot that you like, you can lock it in place. There's a way to latch that via MIDI as well, where you can kind of like lock that whole buffer in place as opposed to having to press and hold to play over it. Pretty straightforward. Uh, you've also got, obviously, your overall amount of fidelity and amount of delay time on tap. And uh, importantly, if you go down to those lower settings, you've got classic mode. You get more kind of melty stuff out of it. And all that noise. And then classic off. You also can get some insane delay times. and spread.
Okay, for clarity on the stereo implementation of that delay, uh, it's basically ping pong. Uh, it takes each pass of the delay and uh, pans it left or right. This is not just a ambient delay. You have all that crispy lo-fi, giant washy, super far left and right stuff, but you do also have access to far less ambient, far more rhythmically available digital delay sounds. And that can be made uh, even more kind of like tailor-made and fine-tuned for what you need with some of the hidden features that we'll get into in a little bit. And of course, I'm such a sucker for the fact that I can turn off that spread. We're back on. It's really handy. Moving now over to slip mode, we've reset everything to noon, but you will quickly hear that that's not actually that useful uh, with all of the knobs at noon for this, for this mode. Uh, slip was my favorite mode on the old mood. Uh, I was pretty convinced that for being not a delay, it was the best reverse delay I had ever played. And this expands on that in all the ways that I wanted it to. Uh, the number one being that in classic mode on here and on the original mood, getting unity reverse was a somewhat precarious and finicky process to fine tune in. And mood mark two seems to have kind of like greased the wheels a little bit on making that an easier thing to accomplish. So let's get into slip mode. Uh, time is going to be the length of your sample, uh, kind of like anywhere from more instantaneous uh, pitch shifting and modify is going to be the speed and direction of your playback. I guess I should also clarify that slip mode is basically a sampler that's always listening and playing back. When we turn it on and listen, you will hear nothing because at noon, it's basically moving back at no speed, uh, not forward or backwards. But as we move it forward, See, in the old one, if we go over to classic, just to get ahead of ourselves. You hear all that kind of like artifacting. It's incredibly hard to get like unity pitch on the old mode. Even trying to like match it with the clock ends up being incredibly difficult in, in the moment. It was a very hard to use live effect. But now we have the modern mode. This mode clock is basically going to give you, as always, more fidelity and and help with the time in terms of getting the most immediate or like latent repeat. But you'll, as you hear, it's not a delay; it's only one repeat.
And here is what I loved about old, uh, old slip made much better in this one. buffer and all of a sudden you've got this amazing few moments in this video where we will turn on some other wet effects because I think that throwing like the L cap and the big sky after that and honestly just going like full wet with the moods slip in reverse is one of my favorite things that either mood has ever been able to do. And of course, important to hear that with spread turned on because you've got a panning uh, stereo effect in this mode. And of course, classic back on for some of that grit. Classic back off. With some experimentation, this mode can be really fascinating to try to find cool harmonies that follow you around.
different rhythmic components you can pull from when you're in the reverse mode on this are really fascinating. A couple of quick thoughts on clearing the buffer on this and or uh, overdubbing into it. By When you activate your looper, you can press and hold to initiate overdubbing, which allows you to play new notes into the buffer. Or you can do what I tend to do, which is use a MIDI controller to turn my buffer or my dub on and off. Uh, to be able to overdub into the buffer. Uh, when you bypass the looper, it starts to clear out the buffer entirely. It doesn't immediately kill the entire thing like Mood Mark 1 does to clear the buffer. You can actually bypass it briefly and re-engage it to create little pockets of fresh tape, so to speak. So you can add new things in later or just create kind of glitchy uh, missing pieces. Here's a quick example of that in the tape mode. So you can hear those are missing. And if we turn on overdub, So to clear the buffer entirely, you basically just want to bypass the looper, let it run its course, and then you will have fresh tape. So as we move into the micro looper side of this pedal, we're going to start things off in envelope mode. And envelope is an interesting place to start because it's the only one of the three micro loopers where the length and the modify don't actually adjust the loop itself, but rather how your incoming guitar signal modifies the loop kind of like as you go into it. So basically what's happening here is length and modify are going to set the sample size and the sensitivity, which determines kind of a glitchy, stuttery, repeating on itself effect applied to the loop based on your incoming playing dynamics. So let's capture up a little bit of a loop here and start kind of like glitching it out using those two parameters. hear our incoming guitar signal but instead you can hear what happens when I play my guitar and kind of trigger that glitchy kind of like fall back on itself loop that so depending on where you kind of grab your signal you can create very percussive elements or very smooth elements and like I said that length control will grab like the largest possible buffer size Or 
more progressively smaller, glitchier, stutterier. Or you can get almost granular with it. So bringing this back down so you can actually hear my guitar again. Modify on the other hand is going to be the sensitivity of that uh, of that kind of like envelope trigger at very extreme settings. Even like touching your strings can trigger that loop. Actually, kind of like play softly along with it and only trigger repeats when you want to. application of this is having this feed into something like the reverb. That added wash gives you the opportunity to kind of grab Kind of soften up the way that that kind of like comes apart like that. Um, let's go ahead and initiate that spread. So in this mode, in envelope mode, the way spread operates uh, because each of the different uh, looping engines kind of like has a different stereo implementation. Uh, in this one, your loop will kind of operate as expected like this. But when you trigger that glitchy stuttery thing, it will actually ping pong left and right. back to full wet. Let's clear that buffer and let's uh, let's pull up a fresh loop and hear how classic sounds. It's 
So we now have classic on, spread turned off. It's worth knowing that uh, classic will still do the same spread action. But you can get more of that white noise in it. So let's jump over to tape mode. And tape mode is probably my standout favorite micro looper on here for its consistency and reliability as a straight up tape loop, but also for its ability to kind of like have very easy and easy to understand and straightforward parameters being the length of your loop for being able to trim your loop up, the speed and direction that the loop is playing, as well as a really interesting stereo implementation that spread control is going to uh, basically take that loop, play it forward on one channel, backwards on the other, and uh, and it can just go from a very straightforward focused loop out to these like really big, washy, slow moving, kind of reverse and not reverse at the same time ambient soundscapes. It's it's something really special. So let's get into the tape loop. So let's start let's start capturing our tape loop at a higher tape fidelity. Uh, basically with higher clock sound for kind of higher quality, but that also will give us a trick that I really like using in a second here. So as you can hear, you have your ability to kind of like change that speed and direction of that tape loop. As well as to trim it up. But one of my favorite tricks on this thing is bringing that clock down and then speeding up the tape loop to offset the pitch change, creating stretched, long, lo-fi versions of it. So you go, bring it down to like a really grindy, slow clock speed. And you get almost like a very, um, get almost a very like William Basinski uh, tape degradation kind of quality. And then of course let's listen to that spread control. You'll notice that when we played it in, uh, it played back at the speed that the tape loop was set at. So an important note to make about the tape loop uh, on the micro looper is this knob position does not control the speed of the tape that you are recording to. It is just the speed of the playback. And what I mean by that is no matter what you record, no matter where this knob is when you record, this position is going to be kind of unity pitch forward and this is going to be unity pitch backwards. So if I record down here for like a super low tape speed. It's going to play back slow and this will still be unity. So if you want to do pitch adjusted. So if you want to do pitch adjusted levels of tape looping on top of itself in here, what you want to do is set your clock a little bit higher capture maybe like some chords.
speed that clock down using this to change your speed. Turning dub on. And then when you speed that, now you're actually getting those kind of like multi-speed changes. same rules apply to being able to record it in reverse. This is always reverse. But now we can take that spread back on. And then again, you process that through something like the reverb. And you have absolutely massive washy stereo beds of music. third mode in Mood Mark II's Micro Looper is Stretch Mode. In the Mood Mark I, Stretch was my standout favorite mode. It's probably my favorite single feature outside of maybe Slip on the original Mood for its ability to kind of like instantly and effortlessly create these formless, completely edgeless kind of like washes of audio. Like you just create these like massive kind of like like I said, very formless. Any of all your playing dynamics were washed out. And uh, a certain amount of controversy in very small pockets of the internet has been made about the implementation of that mode on the new mood. Uh, basically, in classic, with the buffer size cut in half, you still can't actually get back to exactly what that original stretch mode was doing, or so it has seemed in my and everyone I've talked to is testing. Now, it is worth noting there's a USB port over here, presumably for things like firmware updates. So it is possible that that will get re-implemented at some point, but I don't know. I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not privy to any of that information. I've had no conversations with uh, people inside the Chase Bliss headquarters about whether or not there are plans for that. Having said all that, it is still uh, a interesting and creative micro looper that you can use to create some really interesting stretched out beds of audio in really cool ways, especially when you feed it back and forth between it and the reverb on this thing to create some very cool kind of detexturized textures. So in stretch mode, you're basically taking pieces of your audio, uh, kind of isolating it and stretching it and changing the direction of it. Uh, this lower control, the modify is going to be the stretch amount and direction. And the length is going to be the size of the kind of sliced up audio. Uh, you are going to get the most stretch, the closest to noon. And as you move away from noon clockwise, you are going to get bigger kind of like less stretched audio going forward and same thing counterclockwise is going to have less stretched, more like intact audio going in reverse. So let's capture up some audio and kind of like look at how we can kind of recreate some of those really formless textures uh, for the stretch mode. As you can hear, it's processing. Let's take that loop to max and all the way uh, clockwise. You can hear our loop just kind of playing back as intended. And as we move that modify towards noon, you get progressively bigger pieces of stretching or progressively more stretched audio.
So like I said, it's it's difficult to get quite that same level of like ideal, identifiable stretch from mode one in modern mode. Let's take that out, turn on classic mode and see what we get. trick is throw into the reverb and turn spread on. From there, you can also turn overdubbing on. Which actually does create for some really interesting abilities to kind of like add smooth textures in. And let's turn classic back off. off, take that reverb back out, it's also worth noting that in this mode, uh, the kind of like version of stereo spread that gets applied is that very similar kind of like panning process that uh that some of the other modes do it's one of them only like kind of like repeated modes not the original stretch mode, I am still a fan. So let's get into what makes the uh, the Moon Mark II 
in my opinion, maybe the most compelling release Chase Bliss has ever done. Um, definitely the most impressive in terms of like features wanted and features added. Uh, one of my standout ones, one of the things that I've talked about a lot in this video already, I'm sure, is my love of the fact that you now can MIDI clock mood, which is a huge, huge win for me. But uh, beyond that, you also have access to uh, a bunch of hidden features on here, uh, kind of secondary parameter controls that make the new Mark II mood, especially in stereo, a, an incredibly, incredibly versatile and potent pedal that can be kind of fine-tuned for whatever you need. So uh, let's kind of run through what they all are really quickly, and then we'll go through and kind of piece by piece take a look at what, what makes each one such a useful piece of the puzzle. Starting in our top left and working across, we have uh, control over your stereo width of the pedal, uh, your ramping waveforms. Basically, when you when you ramp any of your parameters, you can adjust a bunch of different waveforms uh, to kind of fine tune the ways in which those automated parameter adjustments happen. A fade control for your loop, uh, a tone control, a low pass filter for your wet effects, which I love. Uh, the level balance between the two effects, the ability to feed dry signal from the micro loop out of the pedal alongside it running into the wet effect, which was not possible in the Mark I. The ability to desync the two sides from one another, the ability to apply your stereo spread to only one of the two effects, and be the ability to cut from the modern double length loop buffer down to an original half length. In order to access any of these things, press and hold both switches and make whatever adjustments you wanna make. If you get lost along the way, all you have to do is toggle this bottom middle preset switch left and right three times, one, two, three, you'll see it arcade and then you double press right there and it resets all of your parameters to their original settings. So as you can hear, we are back in a mono delay. Let's turn our spread back on. And start up in that top left with the stereo width control. Stereo width is such a incredibly useful and niche thing to uh, to include here that should absolutely not be a niche thing to include on any stereo device. There is always a compelling reason to be able to adjust your stereo width of any of any pedal, especially when it comes to wet effects and especially with anything time-based. I'm a big advocate that different delay configurations, different delay parts require different stereo images. Like if you're doing that classic, uh, the edge, kind of driving dotted a thing or like that the the temper trap like if you're doing that kind of thing uh you kind of want it to be that that driving uh mono delay thing same thing with like uh with with a uh, like tremolo picking Having it be center channel like that gives you uh, better, better support for your guitar. You kind of want your your delay to to feel like an extension of your dry signal. Versus that super wide ping ponging thing. Great for ambient stuff. Not always great if you want that kind of driving support. It can sometimes, especially with lower mix settings, you can feel like you're leaving your dry guitar out to dry. But that is why you can actually control the amount of stereo spread on your signal. At fully clockwise, you are doing the traditional hard left, hard right ping pong. But as you turn it down, you start getting closer and closer to the center. Uh, at clock, at fully counterclockwise, you've got mono. And you can find some really great just, just outside of the center. At low settings, it can almost sound Haas effecty, but with even better focus. Like you hear how close that sounds while still giving that center channel breathing room.
where you can still do that dub, that kind of a. You can still get all of your. And it feels less ping pongy, even though you are getting hard left, hard right, you're not getting uh, your, your kind of like center channel left out to dry, but you are still getting a stereo image in a way that I really love. And for context, like I said, that feels stereo. It feels comfortably stereo. Versus a hard ping pong. Same thing applies for, uh, this is incredibly useful, again, like for something like slip over here, when you're doing that kind of like reverse delay thing. It can feel a little, again, it can feel a little bit uh, whiplashy to take that super wide stereo image. Unless that's what you're looking for, like having that kind of swing all the way past can be really compelling and interesting uh, if that's what you want out of your mix. But setting slip to just kind of hover around your center channel can also be really compelling as a subtle stereo application. Staying on that wet channel, let's go ahead and talk about that modify control or the modify sub control. This is great because it's a low pass filter. Sometimes you want those butterflies, those little flittery octave up things to be a little bit more subtle. Let's go to full wet so you can really kind of hear the value of being able to kind of like roll that back. And similarly, uh, that's incredibly useful if you want a slightly more subtle delay out of this thing.
go anywhere from like a subtle roll off to a really aggressive one. So you've got that kind of like wide open digital delay. Kind of a subtle roll off. It just softens it up really nicely. Or something properly murky, and let's turn that, that modify up just to like really make a point of it. It's also a great way to prevent those kind of like cascading clock changes from getting really aggressive. Like if we open that uh, that loop all the way back up and go with like a nice long delay or a, a nice like long clock size because you're set super low. That's very trebly. And that's more subtle. Sounds great on the uh, on the reverb too. Being able to low pass that reverb is haunting. So let's jump to the effects on this side really quick, these hidden features. Uh, this top one is going to be your fade control and this is gonna be your direct micro loop. So let's start things off by taking a look at fade over here. This is going to basically set an age control on the loops while overdub is engaged. So basically uh, when this is read, either by holding it down or by toggling it as I like to do on my MIDI controller, uh, you can basically set it so that your loop will last forever and you basically can kind of continue to play and stack and build up forever, as is the default. Or you can dial it back so that over time, those loops fade away, older loops fade away as you kind of like add new stuff on. It's worth noting, while the loop is green, nothing will fade away. It is like locked in place. But when you are overdubbing, uh, lower fade settings will allow the kind of like older layers of your loop to kind of progressively kind of like fade into the background. So let's dial back our, our fade control a little bit, and let's set up a, uh, um, a little bit of a loop and then engage a like latched version of our overdub. So this will stay in its current state for as long as we leave it alone, but by switching to dub, it will start to fade. And you can of course set it so that it does not over it does not fade as fast.
bounce that back and forth. that's fade. As you heard during that portion, we we made a jump over to uh, over to a wet effect. And what you heard as a result was all of our existing loop getting chewed up and uh, and, and full wet processed on that effect side. This was something that was just kind of like stock standard and unchangeable in the original mood in this new uh, more versatile, more adaptable mood. Let's bring some of that loop back, uh, that loop life back. You can now go from a default of none of your dry signal passing through over top of your wet effects to having it be uh, capable of achieving unity gain with your wet effects. So by default, if we run a, a tape loop, And then we process it through our reverb. You lose all of your, you lose all your tape loop. It goes full wet into that reverb. However, it does not need to be like that. You can now do what I have always wanted to do, which is process that loop with your dry signal still making it through the, the murk and the mire of that reverb. Give it a nice, a nice wide wet effect, nice cloudy, somewhat low passed reverb, and still be able to hear the actual loop itself. Listen to the difference there, like. Completely dry loop. And just a little bit of ambience. Okay, next up, let's take a look at the clock's hidden menu control, which is going to be your level balance, which is the relative loudness between the wet channel and the micro looper. In the Mood Mark 1, uh, you only had a mix control for the entire pedal, and uh, your wet effects and your loop were the same volume relative to this mix control. But now you have a taper between the two, and so you can prioritize one or the other, and then kind of take that ratio and apply it to your overall mix taper for the pedal itself. So let's go ahead and take a look at building an ambient loop that you then make nice and quiet so that you can play with your wet effects over top of it. So we've got a, a uh, reverb 
put together right here. And let's give it that spread. And let's have it so the wet effect uh, is only on our dry signal. Okay, so now let's capture ourselves a tape loop. if we want to be able to kind of more effectively play over that loop. It's worth paying attention to that uh, if you then throw your wet effect or your micro looper into your wet effect, you're going to get that volume jump back up to unity because uh, I have my my dry uh, my my dry loop through set to unity with my wet effect. So that actually will override the mix taper we just applied right here. So you hear that it it jumps up to unity volume because it's supposed to be sending through at equal volume with the wet effect. Uh, but we can then use that uh, that micro looper unity volume thing, reduce that back down. And now it kind of stays wherever that's set, which is really handy. Yeah, it's nice to be able to kind of like make those adjustments. Conversely, you can create a nice big pad like we just did. Play Unity with it and not get super washed out by our reverb. And that's that loop balance. Let's talk about the waveforms. Let's talk about ramping. We're finally there. We're finally talking about ramping, the thing that people tend to get the most frightened about when it comes to Chase Bliss pedals. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, we're gonna keep this simple. Uh, this mix knob up here jumps between five different waveforms, starting fully counterclockwise and basically incrementally, basically here, here, straight up, here, and here. So five quadrants, and you have access to the default waveform, which is triangle at fully counterclockwise, then square, sine, stepped random, and smooth random. Uh, pretty straightforward, pretty obvious. Let's set up a, uh, let's, what do we want to ramp? Let's go ahead and ramp clock because that's going to be the most obvious thing. So we'll start ramping clock uh, set to reverb on this guy. And we will, uh, and then we'll kind of step through those different, those different waveforms. So you can hear the differences. This is one time where we actually have to get into the dip switches themselves. I mean, you don't have to, all of this is literally all controllable via MIDI, but we don't have the MIDI set up on the, on the uh, controller for this right now. Okay, so we have set the uh, the ramp. We've set the bounce uh, dip switch to on, and we've set our uh, clock dip switch to active. So we are now ramping the clock. And then you use the uh, this ramp control right here to decide how fast you want to actually ramp. So you can hear in this current one, you are you are stepping smoothly from clock setting to clock setting here. We are now stepping through in square. Sine wave. We are now in random. Now we're in random. And smooth random. And now at this point in the video, you might be asking yourself, why does Chase Bliss include sine waves and smooth randoms alongside uh, properly stepped randoms and square waves if the clock is incrementally stepped by default anyways. And the answer to that is because on this version of the mood, you can actually make the clock uh, smooth instead of stepped. So instead of stepping between presets, uh, 
subdivisions of your clock. You can actually use either a dip switch or a MIDI to turn a smooth clock on. So if we go to this smooth random like we're on currently, actually, let's jump back up to our sine wave. If we turn smooth clock on, all of a sudden, And if you're somebody who wants that smooth clock, but sometimes you want that kind of slightly more predictable, but also slightly more chaotic version of a step thing, you can turn smooth on, jump back to a square wave, and now you have. like fireworks. Turn smooth off. I'm not sure what the use case there is, but someone has it. It's going to sound dope, and it's probably cyber attack. Let's go ahead and take a look at the... Uh, the hidden features in these three switches. Uh, the mode switch on this side is basically going to be your loop length. So if we disengage that and we just go to this tape control, you do uh, clock at noon, tape moving forward, full loop length. This is basically how long your loop is. As you can tell, for that setting, much longer than the old uh, mood was. And if you're used to kind of those m truly micro loop, micro loop catches, uh, by holding down and switching to the left, you can actually shorten your loop length back to the original mood's uh, loop, loop length, which is, is just kind of a quality of life thing if that's something that you wanted. So now... much shorter and you know if you're just trying to catch happy accidents in the mood you kind of want access to sometimes that's all you want sometimes you just want that that short little bit And then you go ahead and with the new moods capabilities. Find that exact right balance of wet effect and dry through. Yeah, 
half speed can actually be really comforting you know in a weird way like that limitation can be a really potent song motif generator And now we're back to full for the next time we capture a loop. Let's go ahead and talk about spread solo. So on this routing right here, uh, as you've been listening to, we have both our, uh, our wet effects and our looper functioning in stereo. So if we capture something in our loop, And you have that spread turned on. You hear, obviously, that tape loop running forward on our left channel, backwards on our right channel. Getting all of our settings back. But what if you don't want that loop running in stereo, but you do want your reverb running in stereo? You actually can do that now. Uh, by using the routing control in the middle, uh, you can hold both buttons down, and then the center position is going to keep both of them in stereo. Clicking it to the left will just put your wet effect in stereo while keeping your loop in mono, or vice versa. So let's go ahead, collapse our, our little like tape loop back down to mono so that we're not getting that reverse on one side, forward on the other side sound but give it some reverb. Or some delay. And so now you have that loop still sitting center channel, but you're not sacrificing your actual like wet effects. Your guitar can still come through. Vice versa. Maybe you want those those big slip reverses to follow your guitar perfectly, but you do want your kind of like big ambient washi loop to sit way out in the corners. You can actually accomplish that. Your center channel stays nice and free and open for your own playing, and you can let the other stuff kind of bounce around in the wings. everything back to proper stereo.
Wrapping up this section, we're going to take a look at the sync control, which is going to be the last of the kind of like hidden modes we're looking at in this video. Uh, and there is an incredibly valuable little rhythmic component here. You can actually set uh, either engine in this thing to follow the time control or the length control, I guess, of the other engine. So instead of just kind of like following the clock as kind of this nebulous center position thing, you could actually set something as like a delay time and then use that to set your length for your loop so that you can actually kind of create more predictably rhythmic loops without having to implement MIDI in the mood. Or you can do it with MIDI, which is also incredibly helpful. So what we're gonna do here is set up that uh, delay time on the right side so that we are following this kind of rhythmic material. But what I wanna do Let's have it so my wet effect is only going on my dry signal. You can hear that that loop is actually like perfectly in time with what I was playing. Another good example of using that, uh, that split between So now our loop is still kind of running backwards on one side, forward on the other, but our delay is now back to being center channel only. And this is a trip because like, this is the thing that the first mood did not do. Predictable loop lengths, knowing exactly what kind of you play, what you're playing into the pedal ahead of time was almost impossible. And it's still not an exact science, but now you actually have some like, some level of control. Restarting that process, let's go ahead and take a listen to. A nice long and if we turn dub on uh, playing into the overdub version of the looper on this thing is also not an exact science, but this will give you a little bit more predictability over that. Again, you throw a reverb on the end of this and you are in business.
and it gives you opportunities to change that loop length in yet another interesting way, rather than just controlling that loop length. You are now adjusting that loop length using the properties of changing the, uh, the delay speed. So different ways to glitch it up. Jumping over to that reverb. Fascinating stuff. Yeah, there are so many, there's such a vast number of ways to adjust your approach with the new Mood Mark II. There are so many different ways to kind of manipulate every aspect of this pedal using things like these hidden options. Mm -hmm. 